posture and keep their hips tall. Athletes whose hips begin to drop at this point may lack sufficient leg stiffness. This is often a result of poor preparation for ground contact while in the flight phase. It also may be a result of insufficient eccentric strength or power. As the athlete enters the middle of the stance phase, the swing leg knee should be coming high and in front of the body and the heel should still remain fairly closely tucked towards the buttocks. One important cue to remember that is often beneficial for a high recovery of the knee is stepping over the ground support knee. When an athlete steps over the opposite knee, it helps them to indirectly create more vertical forces and also creates a more active high knee lift. During the late stance phase, the swing leg knee should be coming almost completely in front of the body. A high knee position should be observed and upright posture should be maintained. At this point, the swing leg should begin to unfold. This means that at the knee joint, there should be a slight bit of extension. As the knee moves in front of the body, the lower leg should begin to unfold slightly. This is not something that an athlete needs to do actively. This will happen naturally. Forcing it will be very detrimental to performance. As the athlete toes off, they should focus on projecting the non-support side hip. This will help to increase stride length just slightly and also elicit an elastic response in the musculature of the pelvis and trunk. Again, a high knee position should be observed and in preparation for ground contact, the ankle should be neutral or slightly dorsiflexed. Better athletes will display minimal backside mechanics at this point. Remember though, this isn't because they are intentionally trying to chop off their stride behind them. Rather, it's because they're applying great vertical forces and as a result, they're breaking contact with the ground sooner. The flight phase may very well be the most important portion of the sprint cycle. This is because, despite not being able to apply forces to the ground during this phase, they can adequately prepare for ground contact. Ground contact is extremely short. In the best sprinters, it's under one-tenth of a second. This short period of time while in ground contact means that the athlete cannot sufficiently apply vertical forces unless they first prepare for ground contact while in the flight phase. What we should see is that as the thigh reaches a high knee position, it is accelerated down very fast towards the ground. This downward and backward acceleration of the thigh will naturally cause the lower leg to open up. Again, this doesn't have to be done actively. In fact, actively trying to kick out or paw at the ground will have very serious detrimental effects. The foot should remain stabilized in a neutral or slightly dorsiflex position. This position has several advantages. First, it places the ankle joint, which is the weakest joint of the leg spring, into a very strong position. Also, it places the gastroxoleus complex under stretch. This allows it to apply greater forces and produce greater speeds upon ground contact. Another benefit of a neutral or slightly dorsiflex foot is that it places the fascial linkages of the posterior chain on stretch. This will help to get the leg under the body sooner as the athlete is still in the flight phase. Because the fascial linkages of the posterior chain are on stretch, it will actually help to bring the leg downward and backward back to bottom dead center. Remember, when ground contact is made very close to bottom dead center position, breaking forces are minimized. The final benefit of a slightly dorsiflexed or neutral ankle position is that it gives the soon to be ground contact leg a couple moments longer before it makes contact with the ground. While this may seem insignificant, it may be as great as two to three centimeters, which is significant enough to drastically reduce braking forces at ground contact. The arm swing is a portion of sprinting mechanics which is hotly debated. Many people feel that the arm swing is very important to horizontal propulsive forces. This, however, is not actually the case. There are actually very little or no horizontal impulse coming from the arm swing. This is because as one arm swings forward, the other arm is swinging backwards. So as a result, they cancel each other out. While this may seem inconvenient, the arms do have a role in sprinting mechanics. The arms can actually increase vertical impulse at ground contact. This is because unlike in the horizontal direction, both arms are swinging upwards and downwards simultaneously. When the arms are swinging upwards, they can help to increase vertical propulsive forces. 
Another role of the 